Hello, hello. How are you doing? How are you doing? This is the S. Anthony Thomas. This is the S. Anthony Says Podcast, episode number 453. How are you doing, my friends? How the heck are you doing? You know, I'll be honest with you. This is just one of those days, and we've all had those days where everything is a little bit off. For me, everything was a little bit off. I almost forgot to record this episode because that's how off I was today. Everything from the moment I woke up all the way up until just now was a shade off. You know, like when the, those old Rubik's Cubes back in the day where you didn't have the nine colored squares on the cube on each side and you'd have to twist them this way and that way and this way and that way. And many, many times with people that are really, really good at using a Rubik's Cube, they'd do a couple sweeps and then they'd have all the colors lined up properly. But the thing was, the frustrating thing was, if you didn't know how to do the Rubik's Cube, there'd be plenty of times where you would just a shade off. And being just a little bit off on the Ruby's Cube where you couldn't line up all the colors, you might as well be completely all the way off. Because to try to get, when you get close, you think you're close, but you're really a million miles away from from solving the puzzle. Unless you know what you're doing. And that's how human beings are. That's how we are. We're just a shade off, just enough to make us think everything is okay, but a little bit off and it messes everything up. You know what I'm talking about. You ever drive a different way to work because you think you want to try to be faster and because you threw yourself off of mental schedule, you're driving a road that normally you take to your friend's house and you just kind of automatic pilot to your friend's house. And you're going, I'm supposed to be in an office and I'm at my homie's house. What the heck is going on here? Why? Because you took a road you weren't normally going to take and you were a little bit off and the whole rest of the day, you're a little bit off. It happens all the time. That's why I started to do the pat around when I get out of the car. When I get out of my car, I always pat my pocket so I'll know where my glasses are. I'll know where my keys are. I'll know where the key fob to the car is. I know where my phone is. I know where my wallet is. And whatever thing I am happen to be carrying at the time, I make sure that I know where everything is. The pat around. The one time in the past 10 years where I didn't do the pat around, you'll never guess what happened. Exactly. I didn't do the pat around. I was going to get breakfast for some of the people that were in my house. I run over to the breakfast place. I'm talking to the people, having a good time conversation. (laughs) I stuck my hand in my pocket. You know, you just reflexively stuck my hand in my pocket. And I noticed my car keys were not in that pocket. Oh, I'm not close to home. Ooh, where are my car keys? I look around on the ground and panic begins to set in. Where the car keys, where the car keys, where the car keys, where the car keys, where the car keys. I don't know where they are. So I have to walk out and I have to try to retrace my steps. I look around, look around, look around. I saw the street cleaner was way down the block. Oh, no. If I dropped the car keys and the key fob on the ground there and the sweet street sweeper swept it up. First of all, they're crushed and destroyed. Oh, now I have another copy at the house. But it doesn't matter what's at the house. What matters is what's right here. Oh, oh, no. I go back over to the car and you'll never guess what I see. Sitting right in the driver's seat of the car. Yep, the keys right there. Which means if somebody had come over and broken the window, they literally could have just busted the window picked the keys up and drove off with my vehicle. Oh, so I can't walk away now. I can't walk away from my vehicle because I made such a commotion looking around the car that everybody's looking at me. People are going to come over and want to see what's up. And if I go away, oh, oh, here's another thing that was stupid because I was off schedule because I was a little bit thrown off. My cell phone is at home. Because I forgot to put it in my pocket because I was thrown off. Oh, so I can't even call anybody. Ooh, ooh. I asked random strangers if I could make a phone call. I said, it's a, you know, and then you don't have to worry about it being a local call because all phone calls on cell phones are pretty much local no matter what anyway. But if, uh, my phone's broken. Apparently, when you ask people if you can make a phone call, apparently for some reason that makes everybody's phone broken. It's amazing. You ask 15 people and all of their phones are broken. What a coinky dink. I want to go back over to the breakfast place, but if they go back over to the breakfast place, I'd have to leave my car sitting in with the car keys in there. Ooh, have to risk it.
Go back to the breakfast place, call my relative, tell my relative who has a copy of my house key, thank goodness, to go get my keys and bring them to me. They get my keys, they bring them to me, no problem solved. Right? The problem solved. I high five my relative, say thank you, realizing that they still owe me 85 favors. <laughs> it was 86. And everything's fine. But as I sit in the car, I'm wondering, man, people are pieces of crap. They see you in distress and their phone's broken. You pieces of crap. But I digress. But why did I make that mistake? A mistake I normally don't make. Why? Because I was a little bit off. Something had changed. I made one little mistake early in the day and it compounded again and again and again and again and i kept making dumb mistakes during the course of the day everybody knows what that's like you know what that's like i remember working in an office one time right and i had all of my my clients it was during my sales days and i had all of my clients information in the computer right and in the notes section, normally you're supposed to write notes about the sale of 16 ribbons and the cartridges and this, that, and that. I put in information like, you know, if the person mentions their wife and kids and little wacky stories about their wife and kids, I would type that into the notes, right? If we had a funny conversation and I had a, a conversation with the person and we had a little funny interaction, I typed the funny little interaction into the notes. Yeah. Right. And it worked great. I'd call up people. Hey, how about those? And I would if there was a it was if I was calling a client and the client had was a fan of a team that was a, a, a rival to a team that I liked, I would trash their team and it would turn into like a little camaraderie thing. And one time, one time I was sat at the wrong desk. Now, it didn't matter that I was sitting at a different desk. It's one little change. It was just I was just backward instead of looking out at the wall i mean looking out the window i was looking out the at the wall it was the same computer uh, terminal everything was the same except i was tapping into my accounts why was i thrown off that one little thing threw me off so much so that i actually when i called the client almost lost the damn account called the client and i started referencing things that someone else said and the guy thought I was crazy. Um, no, we didn't talk about that. Oh, come on. Ha <laughs> ha. I think he's joking. He's not joking. He's now getting annoyed. Hey, um, um, I remember that. And he started to get annoyed. You don't even know who you're talking to, do you? You know what? <laughs> he started getting upset. Almost lost the client. One little thing had changed. And I was thrown off. It's amazing how that works. You know, you see what happens when you have a relative that's the, the cornerstone relative to your family. Maybe they're your grandparent where everybody congregates at grandma or grandpa's house, right? And then unfortunately they pass on to the great baby beyond. And that person was the only person holding anyone together. It's one member of the family, an important member of the family, but one member of, member of a large family. And that one member goes away and all of a sudden the whole family splinters. One change. One person missing and all of a sudden relatives that you used to see five or six times a year, you see them at the mall and you realize it's been quite a while because the last time you saw them, they were carrying their child. And this time their child is picking them up from the mall in a car that they're driving that they own because the kid's 18 now, not two. It's been that long. And the only reason it's been that long is because that one person passed away. One change. One of the best things about human beings are the fact that we're creatures of habit. That's an amazing thing. And it's one of the things that gets us through the day. It's one of the things where we can put things on autopilot and it's okay. But sometimes when that one thing changes, when that one little change throws everything the hell off, I had a situation before where I had an old phone number. And once I changed my cell phone number, I still had the, the answering service on the old number just in case there were people I, hadn't get, I couldn't get in contact with. And I would check that number religiously. Every day in the morning, I'd check it. And then I would check it in the afternoon. And then I would check it in the evening just in case. And eventually, I had gotten everybody over to the new phone number. Or so I thought. One of the bookers that I knew 
hadn't updated his file. And for some reason, I had forgotten to update the file. Normally, I'm very meticulous. I literally will sit there with the list and go through all the names, but I didn't do it this one time. Oh, no. Didn't check the messages. He didn't call. And most of the time, bookers don't call me because I'm so reliable. When I show up, there's no reason to check on me. So they do not call me. They just book me and then they'll see me when they see me the next time. So there was no reason for me to expect a phone call. And then it kind of seemed like I got to everybody, but I did not. He called to let me know that they had changed the format of the club. They weren't doing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday anymore. They were just doing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There were no shows on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So you're not, we're not going to lower your pay. You're still going to get the same pay, but you make sure you just show up on Friday. Don't get here Wednesday or Thursday because we're not, we're, you're not on the show Wednesday and Thursday. We're not doing regular shows Wednesday and Thursday. They went to an open mic format, open mic, meaning like amateurs can come in and learn how to do their craft or professionals can come in in practice or work on new material. I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't travel that far for an open mic night because that's a weekend gig, a real gig, a real show. But he called the other number. Me making a slight change, not being as OCD as I normally am about those things, that one change, that one slight thing that I changed, oh no. I make the long trip Yes, looking at my notes on the way, preparing, getting ready, and they, they, they get to the hotel that I normally stay at, and they all know me, but they, 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 what did you do in here? I think they're kidding. <laughs> sure, I, you, yeah, they're not kidding. Oh, I drag my luggage over to the club. The booker's not there. I go to where the booker is. Hey, man, what's going on? What are you doing? Are you, you, oh, you, oh, you, man, what you doing here, man? You come to town? Are you gonna, you, you gonna do some sightseeing? Something? What's going on, man? Would you visit or something? What's going on? Why are you here so early? So early? Yeah, I told you. Don't be here Wednesday, Thursday. You come Friday. Say, get, 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 get. What number did you call? I called the the big kid, kid, kid. Well, my number's not kid, kid, big kid, kid, kid anymore. Now it's just it's a stuff at the flat. Oh, oh. Well, that's the only number I have. Well, my new number is a set. It's a set for the flood. Oh, let me update the, 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 the notes. Okay, okay. I got your new number now. But what are you doing here? Oh, you didn't get the message. No, you called a different number. Oh. Oh. And I'm not close to home now. And this is, I'm basically a homeless guy with, with luggage. Right? Well, you can stay at my house. Uh, for a couple of days, no problem. I kind of don't want to stay at his house. He's a nice enough guy, but I've met his family. And I already know what it's going to be like. I've seen his family come to the club and hang out at the club and everybody's having a great time. And literally, these people are d -d 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 dysfunctional in front of people. So how dysfunctional are they going to be if I'm inside their home, in the confines of their home? I don't want to be in the house when they act the way they act when people are not around. Because at first, you know, the first half of the day, they're going to be on their best behavior because I'm there. But the only thing that's going to happen is the tension is going to build up. They're going to want to snap on each other and curse each other out and say things about each other's mama and maybe even throw some stuff. I know they're going to want to do it. And they're going to be withholding and holding and holding it back in because me, a guest is at the house and then it'll explode. I know that and I don't want to be there for that. I don't want to be standing on the porch talking to the cops. Were you there when they started throwing chairs at each other? Oh, God. I would like to answer that question, but this guy books me seven times a year and his wife books me seven times a year. So I, I don't necessarily, I mean, they didn't actually punch each other, but they do throw things at each other. Okay. And I, well, I didn't actually see that happen, but the level of dysfunction that I see when they're out in public makes me think that that kind of crap could possibly be happening. You know, I mean, they could also be swingers. Okay, that wouldn't be too bad because she's really pretty. But, but that's a different story. <laughs> I would have make him wait outside, of course. <laughs> I don't play that. I don't need nobody watching me work. <laughs> don't judge me. Shut up. But all of a sudden, I, I you know, I, I just came right back 
to New Jersey. I said, you know what? I'm going to go back and then I'll come back on Friday. And I came back on Friday. I came back, went back to New Jersey. You turn on the beep. Hey, dummy, do not come here Wednesday, Thursday. Well, he didn't say dummy. Don't come here Wednesday, Thursday. Come here Friday. And then there was the message. And then, oh, and why did I make that mistake? One little change. Your life is like a, like a code for a computer, man. It's like computer code, man. You know, one little thing that's off and it throws everything off. You become discombobulated. Have you ever turned to your favorite television program and realized you missed it because it came on yesterday? And the only reason you didn't, you were thrown off was because you were wind up babysitting a relative's kids a day early because they had to go someplace and they threw you off, right? You ever turn to the football game and realize the football game was already over or that the football game is tomorrow and the only reason that that happens because you washed your car because you were driving by the car wash and normally it's crowded and you see that it's not crowded today and you're going, I don't want to supposed to come back tomorrow to wash my car, but I'm going to wash my car today because I see that there's no crowd there. And mentally, your mind sees car washing and marks it as the day, the next day, even though it's today, and then you wind up, everything is thrown off. I actually showed up at an office on a Saturday one time and the security guard goes, what in the heck are you doing? It's back when I worked in an office. Hey, man, what are you doing here? Came to work, man. What are you talking about? You work on Saturdays now? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's Saturday. <laughs> right. So that's why I almost didn't I almost didn't record this episode today because I forgot what day it was because I've been off. All day. I hope when I wake up tomorrow, I know it's Monday (laughs) because I have been off all day. But I hope you're doing okay. I know I'd be doing more okay if you do me a favor. You could tell somebody about this podcast. That would be nice. You can rate and review this episode. Five stars, please. That would be great. You can subscribe if you're not subscribed. I would love that. Much love to you all, my friends. Thank you for listening. And I will see you again next time. If I can remember when next time is, because I may still be a little bit off. In fact, did I press the record button on this? Or am I just talking into this microphone for no reason? Let me see. Ah, I am recording. (laughs) Much love, everybody. Episode number 453. That's this one. See you next time, my friends. Bye.